Hi everyone, welcome back to GameMakerCast, it's Mickey, and in this video, let's take a look at a wrapper function that I wrote on top of IMGUI GML. So let's roll the introduction and get right into it. So when I was creating the particle editor, I needed a nice user interface to allow the user to change the values. What I came across looking in the marketplace is a little class for IMGUI GML. So it's a wrapper built into a very standard library that developers use for debugging and a whole bunch of other information. The one thing that I found is it didn't really flow with the style of my coding. So I created a little wrapper to kind of simplify everything and bring it in into something more usable. So that's what we're gonna look at. So let's close my library and I've already imported it into my plugin here. Uh, you can grab it found in the description below. It'll be both on the marketplace for free and also it's gonna be on GitHub and itch.io. Now the first thing I wanna look at is if I go in my objects and I go to the object UI, in the creative event, we wanna make sure that we create a new instance of the UI library itself. Then we'll call the UI.init and all this function is actually doing is checking to see if the IM GUI object exists. If it doesn't exist, then it's just gonna add it into our room. It's a persistent object, so we just need to have that check really once, but it doesn't hurt to have it in the places you're gonna use the user interface. Now, inside the step event, this is where we're actually gonna be coding everything. First, we need to make sure that the UI is ready, and if it's ready, then it will come into this if statement, and then we can kind of draw out the user interface how we like. So for instance, let's start with the menus. Let's say we wanted to use a menu like we have here in GameMaker. What we could do is we could tell the UI library that we want to use a main menu. So the main menu, all it accepts is a function, which is a callback, meaning that anything we put inside this callback is going to be pushed to the main menu. So this is going to be on our main application. So if we were doing something like GameMaker itself, we could also push a menu strip for the file. And I'm going to copy and paste this, and we could have a menu strip for the edit as well. And let's actually make one final menu strip, and that will be for the help. Now that we have the menu strips, which are these guys right here, we need to have the menu items. For example, in the file menu, we could create a new menu item for a new item itself. We could also have an open, so let's copy and paste this. And let's say this is going to be open. We'll also change the hash here. And one thing to note is down here at the bottom, everything is labeled nice and clearly. So you can see that this is going to be the text of the label. This is the ID of the label, and this is going to be what happens when they click it. So that means in the new, let's actually use a show message and we'll just say new. In the open, we'll do the same, but let's say open. And for the help, let's actually copy and paste a menu item here. And let's just say about, we'll copy and paste the about word and change the ID as well to be help about. Now, if I run my game, we're going to have a file menu, an edit menu and a help menu. If we click on the file, you can see we have new and open. Nothing's in the edit because we didn't add. And then we have a help. If we click on help, we get about, and let's try the open. You can see that the clicks are working just fine. So this is a main menu and it's pretty easy. We don't have to worry about opening and closing anything. It's all pretty self-contained. Now, what if you want to do something like pass information to the user. Well, we can use windows to do that. So a window would be some information that we're going to put on the screen, such as a slider, text, or whatever. To create a window, we'll just say ui.window, and you can see it takes a title. So we'll say test window. It also takes an ID. So let's use a window test one, an X position of 300, a Y position of 400. Let's use a width of 200 and a height of 200. Now, just like the menus, we have a a callback function and inside that callback function anything that we write in here will be pushed up to this window so just for instance let's use a label and we can say hello world and now when we run our game we're going to have a window at the x and y position of 300 400 with the width and height of 200 and then it just has a label for hello world 
Now you can get fancy with the window itself. So let's uh, copy and paste something here where we have a test window. We'll give it a ID of window test one. And one thing to pay attention to is the width and height we're passing in zero here. So what this library is going to do is it's gonna figure out automatically how big and how, sorry, how wide and how tall this window needs to be. You can see we're also passing in some extra fields here at the bottom. This is a window flag. So right now I'm going to have no title bar and if we middle click on this particular flag here you can see we have a whole bunch of different things we can pass in and this all comes from the original plugin but right now this is not going to have a title bar so if I run my game this is going to be a nice long window it's going to figure out the width and height and then we don't have any title bar. So what happens if we wanted to use this to our advantage to say have the user change the player's information. You know, I already have something copied here, so I'm going to paste it in and we'll just explain it as we go. So just like before, we have a test window. We are giving it the ID and the position is going to be 200 by 100 and automatically filling out the height and width. We're passing in a label of hello world followed by a separator. And in our case, the separator is just going to be a thin horizontal line. Now the magic is happening here below where we're passing in a slider float. We're passing in the label for scale, even though we also have the image angle in there. We want to make sure that we also pass in the ID and it needs to be unique. The next set of values can be an array of either 1 to 4, and in our case we're passing in 3 values. The function is going to be smart enough to figure out which slider to use in the back end. We're passing in the image X scale, Y scale, and angle, and then we are following up with the minimum of 0 and the maximum of 1. This means that these three values can be in between zero and one. Now, because we passed in three values, we're also going to have a callback with three values being received. So what we can do with this callback is in the order of operations, we can assign each one back the A, B, and C, depending on how we pass them in. So if we run this right now, we should have a slider float for scale. You can see that we have a one, one, and zero. And if I move these, the player actually scales. And if I make that a little bit bigger, the player will rotate and we can see that happening live. So we could take this even a step further and I'm going to just comment this out. And if I go over to my player itself, you can see we're using kind of the same thing. I have a value here to say whether it's selected, I new up and initialize the UI. And if the player is selected, then I'm going to draw the window player information. So if I hit F5 and I click on my player itself, you can see that now I have some object information where I can change the rotation. I can change the image X scale, Y scale, and even the speed that the player is moving. I have a button where I can pause it in case I can't get to the speed fast enough. But this is just a sample of what the UI library can do. And the rest of the documentation is found on GitHub or you can just look through the code. I hope you find it useful and I'll see you in the next video. If you like what you just watched and want to show some love, just click the like button. It's that easy. A special shout out to those on Patreon in no particular order. Robert, David, Victor, Paul, Mary, Ken, Game Making Community, and Ashby. If you want more tutorials or even text tutorials, check out the Patreon site found in the description below.